kinetic energy, speed, weight, velocity, momentum, P equals mv, mass, Ke equals one half mass velocity squared, grains, feet per second, foot pounds, kilograms, joules. Old Grumpy Hunter here. Welcome to Momentum versus Kinetic Energy and Other Things. In my video, are you thinking about taking that advertised 100 yard shot at a deer with a crossbow? I talked about kinetic energy and that brought up a lot of discussion about momentum and why momentum is more important than kinetic energy. I'm going to try to explain in simple terms the following. Momentum, mass, weight, speed, velocity, mass versus weight, speed versus velocity, inertia versus momentum, momentum versus velocity, kinetic energy versus momentum, and how they are all related but are very, very distant cousins. Momentum is the tendency of a moving object to continue moving. In simple terms, momentum is mass in motion. Anything that is moving has momentum. Mass is a measurement of the amount of matter it contains. Weight is the force caused by gravity on the mass of the object. Speed is the rate at which an object covers a distance in a given time. It is not dependent on a direction. Velocity is the rate at which an object changes position and is dependent on direction. Kinetic energy is the work through motion. Inertia is the object's resistance to change in motion or rest. Mass versus weight. Mass is the amount of matter something contains, and the weight is the force caused by gravity on the mass. Mass and weight are two distinctly different units of measurement. The mass of an object is not dependent on gravity, and therefore is different from but proportional to its weight. Weight is the measure of force generated by the mass of an object by gravity. In other words, the difference between mass and weight is that the mass measures how much matter comprises an object, while weight measures the gravitational pull. What does that mean? A hundred pound rock on Earth will weigh only 37.3 pounds on Mars because of the difference of the gravity but the mass of the rock would be the same. On Earth, weight and mass do not have a significant difference, which is why in formulas we can use the arrow's weight for mass. Speed versus velocity. Speed is the rate something moves over time. Velocity is also the rate that something moves over time and requires a change of position. For example, if you took a 15 minute walk around the block starting on the west side, and each side of the block was a quarter mile and came back to the same spot, your speed would have been four miles an hour and your velocity would have been zero. If you walked halfway around the block in seven and a half minutes, your speed would be four miles an hour and your velocity would be four miles an hour east. Remember, to have velocity, you have to have a change in position over time. You did have velocity during your 15 minute walk. When you reached halfway around the block, you had a velocity because change position. Because the arrow has a change of position during its flight, we can use the speed of the arrow in the formulas without worrying about direction. In the are you thinking about taking that 100 yard shot at a deer with a crossbow video, I used the terms average speed and initial speed, but I did not define them. There are three types of speed to think about. Average speed, initial speed, and instantaneous speed. Average speed is the speed at which something travels a distance divided by time it took to go that distance. The results could be in miles per hour, feet per second, kilograms per hour, etc. An arrow or a bullet changes its speed as it travels towards the target. Initial speed. Initial speed is the speed that the arrow or bullet leaves the bow or rifle. With a rifle it's called muzzle velocity. Instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed is the speed at any given instant in time. Most times all you hear about is muzzle velocity or initial speed. 
but what about every speed getting the target and the speed at the target? Luckily there are many tools online to get that info. One I like to use is the arrow and ballistics calculator found at the website listed here. This calculator provides among other information initial speed, instantaneous speed at set distances 5 or 10 yards, it's your choice, and the speed at the target. Plugging in the following information, initial speed 350, arrow weight of 400 grains, the results at 30 yards the speed at the target is 336.1 feet per second and the flight time is 0.26 seconds. With those results you can calculate the average speed of the arrow. Average speed equals distance traveled divided by the time it took to go that distance. 90 feet or 30 yards divided by 0.26 seconds equals an average speed of 346.15 feet per second. This information will be used later in the video. Inertia versus momentum. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion at the same speed and direction unless acted upon a force. Objects have a natural resistance to changes in their motion. This resistance to change in the state of motion is inertia. Think of it this way. When you make your sudden stop in your vehicle, your body wants to continue moving forward. It is the inertia of your body that keeps it moving. Momentum is the motion of an object caused by its mass and its velocity. Any object that is moving has momentum. To understand this a bit better, momentum is your movement and it is inertia that keeps you moving. Inertia depends solely on mass. More mass equals more inertia. Momentum versus velocity. Momentum requires a mass, while velocity does not. Momentum of an object is conserved in a closed system, where velocity of an object is not. For velocity to be changed, there has to be an external force. To change momentum, there needs to be a change in mass. Energy. Energy exists in many forms, and each form can be converted to other forms. With bows, the energy is stored in the limbs and cams when the string is pulled back. It's transferred to the arrow when shot in the form of kinetic energy and momentum. Kinetic energy versus momentum. The speed of an arrow is reduced by both gravity and air resistance. Because of that reduction of speed, kinetic energy drops the farther the arrow travels. Kinetic energy is less than what is calculated just in front of the bow. Momentum also drops. People often confuse kinetic energy and momentum. Kinetic energy and momentum are not the same. It is tempting to think that momentum and kinetic energy are similar concepts, but they are not. They are related, but are different in the physical sense. If you have a choice of getting hit by a rock or a stone having the same momentum. The rock weighs 10 kilograms, or about 22 pounds, and the stone weighs 0.1 kilogram, about 5 ounces. Which object would inflict more damage? You will most likely think that both will cause the same amount of damage, being they have the equal amount of momentum. But the stone will inflict more damage because of the kinetic energy. To understand this, we need to look at a mathematical representation of momentum and kinetic energy for an object. The momentum of an object is the product of the equation P equals mv, where P is momentum, m is the mass of the object, and v is the velocity of the object. Kinetic energy of the object is calculated by Ke equals one half m v squared. If we substitute the equation for momentum into the kinetic energy equation, we get Ke equals one half P squared divided by M. Since the denominator is M, a smaller M will have a larger kinetic energy with momentum being held constant. The stone weighing 0.1 kilogram will have 100 times more kinetic energy than the rock weighing 10 kilograms for a given momentum. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to how much damage it will inflict when it strikes something. 
the stone will do more damage for the given momentum. It is the square of the velocity in the kinetic energy equation that makes this possible. Let's do some math to show what we just talked about. The stone is moving at 40.25 meters per second, or about 90 miles per hour. Plugging the stone's information into the kinetic energy formula, we see that it has a kinetic energy of 81 joules and a momentum of 4.25 kilogram meters per second. Since the rock has the same momentum as the stone, you can calculate its velocity by using this weight momentum. Velocity equals 0 0.4025 meters per second. Now that we have the velocity of the rock, we can calculate its kinetic energy, which comes out to 0 0.81 joules. The momentum of an object is proportional to the object's velocity. When you double the velocity, the momentum is doubled. The kinetic energy of an object is proportional to the square of the object's velocity. So when you double the velocity, kinetic energy is quadrupled. Using the same stone as before, let's look at the numbers. The stone has a kinetic energy of 81 joules, has a momentum of 4.025 kilogram meters per second. So if we double its velocity, the kinetic energy is now 324 and its momentum is 8.05. If we double the mass, the kinetic energy is 162 and the momentum is 8.05. Newton's third law of motion states for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The ratio of kinetic energy of two objects having the same momentum is the inverse ratio of their masses. Remembering the rock and stone having the same momentum of 4.025, the stone has a velocity of 40.25, its kinetic energy is 81. The rock has a velocity of 0 0.4025 and its kinetic energy is 0 0.81. This principle readily applies to crossbows and rifles. When the arrow leaves the crossbow, it has the same momentum as the crossbow, which recoils, due to the preservation of momentum. The arrow has much more kinetic energy than the crossbow. Looking at this more deeply, much more of the crossbow's stored energy is being transferred to the arrow than to the crossbow. As kinetic energy and momentum, the arrow has a greater velocity than the crossbow. Let's try to put this into real world terms. To use units that we're familiar with, grains and feet per second, there has to be a conversion of some type. The conversion results in new formulas and units. Kinetic energy is now one-half times grains times feet per second times feet per second divided by 225,120 and results in foot-pounds. We drop the 0.5 in the formula. We double the divisor to 450,240 with the results in foot-pounds. Momentum becomes grains times feet per second divided by 225,400 and have the results of pound seconds. For the rest of this discussion, I'll be using the following. Crossbow weighs six pounds, or 42,000 grains, a total arrow weight of 400 grains. The initial speed of the arrow is 350 feet per second. Remember, the momentum for both the crossbow and the arrow are the same. By calculating the momentum, of the kinetic energy of the arrow, we then can calculate the kinetic energy and the speed of the crossbow. The arrow has a kinetic energy of 109 foot-pounds. The momentum of the arrow is 0.62 pound-seconds. We can calculate the speed of the crossbow by rearranging the formula and get 3.33 feet per second using that 3.33. The kinetic energy of the crossbow is 1.03 foot-pounds. We 
You can do the same with a rifle and a bullet. The rifle has a weight of 52,500 grains or 7.5 pounds. The bullet has a weight of 100 grains with an initial speed of 3,000 feet per second. The bullet has a kinetic energy of 1999 foot-pounds. Its momentum is 1.33 pound seconds. The rifle is calculated out to be 5.71 feet per second. The rifle's kinetic energy is 3.80 foot-pounds. It's because of the very low kinetic energy that you can shoot a crossbow or a rifle without getting hurt. Getting back to the arrow that was shot before at 350 feet per second or 400 grains that had an average speed of a little over 346 feet per second to the target at 30 yards. Using that information, we can calculate the kinetic energy and the momentum at the time of the shot, at the target, and for the average speed. Getting back to the idea that momentum is more important than kinetic energy, how much momentum would your arrow need to kill a deer at 30 yards? Using the information online about kinetic energy, it takes a minimum of 25 foot-pounds to kill a deer. Using the same arrow as above, the momentum can be calculated by rearranging the formulas. First, you need to calculate the velocity of the arrow by rearranging the kinetic energy formula. Velocity equals the square root of kinetic energy times 450,240 divided by mass. And that works out to be 168 feet per second. The momentum would be point three zero pound seconds. At the target. Earlier I did some calculations doubling both velocity and mass using some generic numbers to show how both kinetic energy and momentum change. This table shows what happens when either the arrow weight or the initial speed, and both are changed by increasing 10%. In summary, mass is the amount of matter an object has, and weight is the gravitational pull on the mass. On Earth, the mass and weight for the most part are the same, and are used interchangeably when it comes to shooting. Speed is a rate that is calculated by dividing the distance by time. Velocity is a speed with a change in the position. Like mass and weight, speed and velocity can be interchanged. Inertia is what keeps an object moving in the same direction. Momentum is mass in motion. Anything moving has momentum. Without air resistance or gravity, an arrow or a bullet would never stop moving. The momentum of an object is proportional to the object's velocity, where kinetic energy of the object is proportional to the square of the object's velocity. Doubling the mass doubles both momentum and kinetic energy. Doubling the velocity doubles the momentum and quadruples the kinetic energy. A light object will have more kinetic energy than a heavy object with the same momentum. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to how much damage it will inflict when it strikes something. Kinetic energy or momentum, use whichever unit you feel you're comfortable with. I've added a link in the video description so you can download the paper that I wrote for this video. Thank you for watching this Old Grumpy Hunter presentation. Please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to push the notification bell.